around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Forceps, will you, Matt? Is this what you mean, Doc? Yes, yes, that's right. Now huh? we'll uh, we'll just huh? yeah. well. At least we got the bullet out. What do you think, Doc? Well, I'm not the good Lord, Matt. Maybe, maybe not. Any uh. Chance of me talking to her now? No, not for half an hour or so. Until the chloroform wears off. Just think of it. Sixty miles on horseback with a bullet in it. I tell you, Indians have got more endurance than any race alive. Yeah, but Sochi's only half Indian. And that's what worries me. She couldn't give you any description at all, huh? Now, Matt, you know that all white men look alike to an Indian. She said she'd know him if she saw him, though. And she kept saying it until she passed out. Yeah, I'll bet she'd know him. He shot her husband down right in front of her and then tried to kill her when she ran. Well, there can't be too many white men in the Choctaw Basin this time of year. Well, whoever did it, you get him, Matt. Little slip of a girl. Pretty as a fawn. Sixty miles and bleeding all the way. Mr. Dillon? Uh, yeah. What is it, Chester? we got to answer that telegraph, Mr. Dillon. Huh? Yeah, the garrison commander at Fort Cougar Pass says only three men have gone into the basin from the west since the thaws. Three, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, does he know any of them? Well, he didn't say so. More than likely, they're trappers shortcutting down from the hills. Well, if they haven't come out this end, it's one of those three. Nobody winters in that basin except a few Indian families like Sochi and her husband. Well, we could find out from Ben Taylor there at Lyle Grove Trading Post. That's where they'd have to come out at. Uh, Doc, uh, I'll be at the jail if she comes to. All right, man. Uh, Doc, Miss Kitty's out in the other room. She wants to know maybe can she help. Uh, she sure as the dickens can. You send her in, Chester. All right. Come on, Chester. I'll go out with you. How is she, Matt? Oh, I don't know, Kitty. Doc had to put her under chloroform to take the bullet out. She's very weak. It's Sochi, isn't it? The half-breed girl who married Walking Deer last spring. Yeah, that's a girl. Yeah, I remember seeing her on Dodge. She's a lovely little thing. Just beautiful. I guess maybe that's what caused it, Kitty. What do you mean, Matt? What happened? Well, all I know is what she managed to tell Doc when she stumbled into his office. Seems that some white man rode into their winter camp up in the Choctaw Basin and asked her and her husband for something to eat. When they gave it to him, he hauled out a gun and killed Walking Deer and then fired a shot at her when she ran for a horse. But she got away. Hanging's too good for whoever did that. It may be, but it'd do in a pinch. Matt, was she able to describe him? Not so far, but she's sure she'll know him if she sees him again. Then you make sure she does see him, Matt. I was kind of planning to. Oh, look, Kitty, I think uh, 
Doc could use some help in there, huh? Oh, yeah, I figured he could. That's why I came over. I'll see you later, Matt. Yeah. It might could be any one of them three men, Mr. Dillon. Uh-huh. Pretty hard to tell which one to bring in. Well, there's one way to tell, Chester. How's that? Right into the basin, round up all three of them, and bring them back here to Dodge. That might take some doing, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, you're right, Chester. It will take some doing. How would you like to improve your position in your unit? Or perhaps you'd like a change in classification. Well, a step in the right direction would be a course with the United States Armed Forces Institute. Yes, a course with USAFI is an indication of your desire to improve yourself. In the past 20 years, USAFI has proved conclusively that men who use their off-duty time constructively are more proficient in their military duties. See your education officer about a USAFI course. What are the horses here, Chester? We may have to leave the creek pretty soon to take a look up some of those ravines. All right, you, Mr. Dillon. Oh. Oh. By Jing, it's just going to come to one two things sooner or later. No. Either that saddle's going to have to change to fit me, or I'm going to have to change to fit it. Take a look at yourself from the rear sometime. Well, now, that ain't too easy to do. I guess you'll have to take my word for it. The saddle's not changing. I thought what I figured. Here, now, a horse. Quit sucking wind in there when you drink. We've got a lot of ground to cover. No, not too much more, maybe. The basin's not over 12 or 14 miles across. Yeah, but they might have rode right on through, Mr. Dillon. One or two of them, anyway. Now, Ben Taylor says no. He might have missed seeing them. Well, Ben knows when a rabbit passes his place. Yeah. You sure enough seen Sochi come riding out hell-bent for leather? Chester. Hmm? The horses. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Maybe we're in luck, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I think we are. There they come. Three of them. All together. My golly, we won't have to round them up after all. No. Just get them to dodge. That's all. Howdy, howdy, gents. Thought we had this basin all ourselves. Oh, uh, you did until this morning. How are you? Just fine. You're asking me, Marshal. Boss. You a Marshal? I'm betting three to one he is. He's got the look. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. My name is Dillon, out of Dodge City. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. How are you doing? Uh, they call me Fegger, Marshal. Fegger? Oh, I had a decent Christian name once, but it got lost somewhere along the trail. Ah, I see. You up this way on business, Marshal? I, uh, don't think I caught your name, mister. Steed. Clem Steed. Steed, huh? How about you? Foss. Curly Foss. Uh-huh. And you're a professional gambler, am I right, Foss? Right, Marshal. You're not a bad guesser yourself. What are you after us for, Marshal? Well, take it easy, Steed. Marshal don't always mean trouble. Looks to me like we all just met accidental. How long you three been traveling together, huh? Just since this morning, Marshal. Me and Foss here, we met, and then we run on to Steed, and it appeared we was all headed the same way, so we strung along. I see. I guess so happens that Steed's right. I'm not here by accident. 
I'm here to arrest one of you for murder. Which one, Marshal? I don't know. And I won't know until we get to Dodge City. One of you shot and killed an Indian and wounded his wife. You figure she could identify one of us. Is that it? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Are you going to take our guns away? Nobody's fool enough to shoot a marshal in front of three witnesses. Maybe none of us done it, marshal. Now, you take me, of course, I ain't got no particular use for Indians. That is, unless they're young and pretty. Now, this girl is, Pegger. They're all a bunch of sneaking thieves. But the difference if one gets killed, more or less. Is that the way you figured it yesterday morning, Steve? I ain't seen an Indian in the last two weeks. Well, you're going to see one tomorrow in Dodge City. Marshal, suppose we was to object to that. Are you objecting, Foss? No. Just wondering. Uh-huh. Anybody else wondering? All right, let's ride. <laughs> How's the coffee coming, Chester? Oh, I reckon it's boiled about long enough, Mr. Dillon. Give it another half minute, though, just to make sure. Coffee's no good if it ain't strong. Well, then, by golly, it must be strong, Steve. Because it smells good. It smells mighty good to me. Oh, Pegger, I make the best coffee in Dodge City, bar and none. Yeah. And it can taste better on the trail. Them beans and bacon we just had. If I was to get them served up to me in a restaurant, maybe in Frisco or St. Louis, I'd just pitch them out on the floor. Come to eat them here by the fire. They tasted pretty good. Well, no, I like beans and bacon in a restaurant, as far as that goes. Chester, you just like to eat. It doesn't make much difference what. Well, no, there's some things ain't fit to eat. And one of them's Indian grub. No dog would eat the stuff they do. He didn't eat their food, Steve. He just asked for it. To get them off their guard. Who asked for it? Now, look here, Marshal. I ain't even seen no Indian. I didn't say you had. Well, anyway. Good food and good drink now. I can't ask for much more than that in life. Oh, I know. River boats is where you find the best. I used to run a faro bank on the Delta Queen between New Orleans and Memphis. Mr. Dillon, you notice them coyotes is shut up? Yeah. There's an animal of some kind prowling off there in the brush. I've been listening to it. Only one or two animals that cause coyotes to shut up. Hey, what, what the devil is that? It's a cougar. That's what it is, a dang cougar. I'll fix that. You're wasting bullets, Steve. You can't see anything out there in the oh, dark. Rifles, what you got to use on a cougar. You just let me get one good look. Take it. Drop that rifle. Well, sure, Marshal. Drop it. All I did was stumble. That's all. You don't think uh, I went to shoot that close to you, did you? From now on, there'll be no more shooting unless I give the word. That includes you, Steve. I hate cougars. I'll kill them on sight. Feel the same way about Indians, do you? You saying I'm a murderer? I'm saying one of you is. It ain't me. Now we'll see when we get to Dodge City. <laughs> You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Old Dobbin must decide that for himself. Similarly, we can lead you to the font of knowledge. We can tell you how, when, and where, but it's up to you to make the next move. As a member of the United States Armed Forces on active duty, you have the opportunity to continue your education through the United States Armed Forces Institute. The courses are varied and practically unlimited in scope. There is something for everyone. 
Your education officer has a USAFI catalog available. Sit down and discuss a correspondence or group course with him. It's your opportunity to increase your power through knowledge with USAFI. your belly so I can pull up this cinch. You ain't fooling me one bit. Why don't you get rid of that horse, Chester? It's a half-hour job to get a saddle on him. Yeah, but once it's on, he's a mighty fine mount, Mr. Dillon. Just as steady as a rocking chair. Come on, breathe, you all I drag a bone. What about the rest of you? You ready to move out? Anytime you are, Marshal. Let's get started. I want to get into town and get this over with. That's only about a three-hour easy ride from here, Steve. What are you getting so spooky about, Steve? I ain't spooky. What reason I got to be spooky for? I wouldn't know nothing about this myself. Oh. Only thing I'm sure of is my own conscience. It's just as clean as a newborn baby. I never killed no Indian, not my whole natural born life. Dar done a lick of work either, beggar, I'll lay odds. Now, for a professional gambler to talk about All right, a lick Mr. of work. Jones. All right, Chester. All right, let's ride. Hey, hold, hold on to that brute of yours, Steed. He tried to savage me. Got him trained that way, Force. He always goes for card shots. You wouldn't be asking for a bullet in your guts, would you? Anytime you think you're fast enough. All right, hold it, both of you. It's it's all right, Marshal. Steed's just mouthy. We'll see about that. The Marshal won't always be around. Well, he's around right now, gents. I suggest you better take it easy. Steed, I told you to keep that animal away. Hey, oh, 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 oh. His horse bolted on him. Or else he's trying to get away. Steed, you and Beggar stick close together and ride easy. Keep that rifle on him, Chester. Oh. Yes, sir. All right, now you two just sit there. He's like and we won't have no trouble. Boss! Hold him in! I, I can't! One bridle rein broke. He, he's got the bit. Steed. He done that on purpose. Maybe. I guess I I'm more used to a stagecoach seat than, than a saddle. You stayed with him pretty good. Yeah. Uh, well, there's no harm done, Foss. We're just that much farther along toward Dodge City. A few men there yourself, Marshal. A few, yeah. That's Dodge City off by the river. Yeah, 20-minute ride, looks like. It's about that. Down there, one of them shacks, there's an Indian girl waiting for us. Waiting to help you plant one of us there in that hill. <laughs> All on account of some savage. And you see a white man hung just for that. Murder's murder, Steve. There are some that disagree with you, Marshal. Uh, they can disagree if they want to, Foss, but they still don't have the right to kill. Now, Marshal, that's not the way I figure it. Hey, what do you do, Marshal? Get him up and now the rest of you. 
If you're thinking of dealing in to help him, just don't. It ain't my fight. Nor mine. All right. And you know, Marshal, I just hate to miss getting another look at that little Indian filly. <laughs> Prettiest I ever saw. You admit killing her husband, Pegger? And shooting her? I wouldn't have hurt her. She didn't run. Just lost her head when she seen me kill him. All right, Pegger, you're under arrest. What? That's kind of funny, seeing as how you're under my... Stay back there, Marshal. I'll blast you Give short. Give me that gun. All right, if that's the way you want it. You... Hey, no. What's the... It's no use, Pegger. You can lay a man's head open, pistol whipping him like that. That's right, boss. All right, Chester, get him back on his horse and tie his hands behind him. Yes, sir. It's lucky for you his gun misfired that way, Marshal. It wasn't luck, Foss. I pulled the loads on his cartridges during the night. You knew it was him? No. Chester and I pulled the loads out of all three of your guns. And you deliberately turned your back on us here, hoping that one of us would jump you and give yourself away. It was the only chance I had of tagging the killer. But what about the Indian girl? She could have told you. She died 20 minutes before Chester and I rode out of Dodge. So Pegger will hang for two murders, not one. 